Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with ILE TV's Morning Briefing. The number of Israelis with the coronavirus has now jumped up to 427, 236 of which are now being hospitalized. This number includes 11 people who have recovered from the virus and have been released home. As of now, five Israelis with the coronavirus are in serious condition and 10 are moderately ill. The rest are only exhibiting light symptoms. This jump comes after Israel has drastically increased its measures to stem the spread of the disease, ordering all Israelis to stay at home and only leave if they need to go to work, buy food or medicine, or get any other essentials. The health ministry has administered over 7,000 tests since the outbreak began, but now says that Israel will be carrying out up to 3,000 tests a day. Health Ministry Director General Moshe Belsimantov is warning that hospitals may soon be overrun with cases if Israelis do not adhere to contagion measures and that doctors won't be able to treat everyone. We understand that the changes that occur in Italy, Sparad and other countries can also happen here. We will see an increase in the number of 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 מאה חולים חדשים ליום, והמספרים האלה ימשיכו ויעלו בימים הקרובים. ואנחנו יודעים שבסוף יהיו גם אנשים שימותו מהמחלה. זה גם יכול לקרות בימים הקרובים. Interior Minister Ali Adeli and Regional Cooperation Minister Tzachi Negbi have also now been ordered into quarantine, along with two other Knesset members, after they all met a southern mayor who was later confirmed to have coronavirus. The Israeli parliament is reportedly considering testing all Knesset members for the disease in the coming days. Israel's police force is scaling up its efforts to make sure that Israelis abide by the rules of social distancing. Police say they've begun to enforce three new emergency decrees. One, self-isolation orders. Two, the requirement to register with the health ministry after returning to Israel from abroad. And three, stopping public gatherings. Israel's latest regulations have demanded that Israelis not leave their homes unless they're going to buy food or medicine or still have the right to go to work. But these are technically only lawful instructions, according to the police, and violating them is not a crime. The health ministry says they're working to make the instructions legally mandatory and for now, police say they're beginning to launch criminal investigations into offenders of self-quarantine. Violating home quarantine can carry a maximum of up to six months in prison and a $1,300 fine. Failing to register with the health ministry after returning from abroad can cost you a fine of up to 780 bucks. And refusing to disperse a gathering that has more than 10 people can also cost you that same amount of money. So far, 72 cases have been opened against violators, and right now, police and the health ministry have begun enforcing self-quarantine orders with phone calls and surprise home visits, about 40 a day. Tens of thousands of Israelis are currently in isolation, and police officials say that 95 to 99 percent of them are obeying orders. Speaking of security, the Israeli government has unanimously approved a measure allowing security services to digitally monitor Israelis carrying the coronavirus. But not everyone is happy about the new measure. Many of the safeguards and oversights that officials claim are being put into place to address privacy concerns have been removed. And now a petition has just been filed against the government with a hearing set for Thursday. New measures to digitally track coronavirus patients harm a basic constitutional right, the right to privacy. That's the message from attorney Shachar Ben Meir, who has filed a petition against the Israeli government. He says that even a dangerous new virus shouldn't create a regime where the government decides everything and there's nobody to monitor or counterbalance it. But for many government officials, sacrificing privacy is a small price to pay for public safety. The Shin Bet Security Service would be allowed to use phone data to track the movements made by coronavirus patients to see who they've been interacting with in the days and weeks before and after they've been placed in quarantine. The data would then be relayed to the health ministry, which would send out a message to those who were within two meters of the infected person for 10 minutes or more. That's all for now. I'm Natasha Kirchuk and see you later with our main daily broadcast.